for years I had heard about those whale sharks, the large beasts that you can swim with that are actually pretty docile. So we decided to make a trip down to Cabo San Lucas and try one of those expeditions where you could actually swim with these guys. Now you can watch all kinds of videos about these sharks. But until you get in the water with them, you're not gonna believe what it feels like, the sensation of swimming next to something so gigantic in the ocean. It's pretty remarkable. So the best way to see them is to head up to La Paz and go on one of the little expeditions or uh, rent a panga and you go out into the water and there are certain areas within the reserve where you're allowed to actually swim next to them. So off we go. Once in La Paz, we found our operator and made our way to the pier where we could board our little panga. As we head out of La Paz, let's take a look at what we know about these interesting animals. Whale sharks are the largest fish in the ocean. They're not mammals like whales, but rather they're more closely related to sharks, with some big differences, mainly in size and what they eat. These animals inhabit the low latitude and tropical waters of the world. There are numerous spots around the coast of Baja California where you can find them as they come into shallow water to feed. However, a specimen tagged in Baja was found off the coast of Indonesia, which gives you an idea of just how far they can travel. Whale sharks can live up to 80 to 130 years, and the older they get, the longer they get with some that can exceed 30 feet in length. It wasn't uncommon to see bottlenose dolphins swimming about, but once a whale shark was spotted, it's a mad dash to get in the water. And just like that, we're in the presence of something magnificent. The first specimen of the day was drifting in and out of the shadows, seemingly oblivious to the recreational divers around him. Small schools of sardines were drifting around its head, either seeking protection or perhaps looking for some of the food that the whale shark was after. As the whale shark turned toward me, I couldn't help but be amazed at the size of the mouth, which was possibly three feet wide. It's amazing that they pose no threat whatsoever to humans, as they are filter feeders and consume plankton, krill, and very small fish. They are truly gentle giants. One of the more curious features of these animals is the fact that they have up to 3,000 or more very fine teeth assembled on about 20 pads in the throat and gills where fine plankton are trapped. Curiously, these teeth do not really serve in the feeding process. It also has gill rakers that line the gills and resemble minuscule toothbrushes. The gill rakers serve to protect the gills from rough material that could damage the gill slits as well as to capture the plankton as they scoop up mouthfuls of water and expel it through their gill slits. Whale sharks will feed an average of seven to eight hours a day and gather 40 to 50 pounds of food to satisfy their enormous appetite. 
Not only do they have an enormous number of teeth in their mouth, but they also have them on their eyes. A recent study showed that hundreds of tiny teeth called denticles form a small ring around the center of the eyes. Since they don't have eyelids, the whale shark uses them as a shield or armor from objects that might come close to the eye, in addition to rotating and retracting the eye halfway into its socket. While tagging helps to identify the migratory patterns of these animals, each whale shark has a distinctive pattern behind its pectoral fins that can be used to identify it. Much like zebras have stripes that are unique to each animal. Finally, you can't help but be fascinated by the remoras, also known as sucker fish, that adhere to the tail and any part of a whale shark. They're not really parasitic, but they do enjoy the free ride offered by the whale sharks. And just like that, the whale shark turned and drifted away. Oh yeah, that was awesome.